You're more than ever one track man 44 here. You can tell by the smile on my wife's face, we ended up in a place that she really wanted to come to. But I tell you what, there's something a whole lot more cooler here than all these silly flowers. Just take a look at how these guys got stuff decorated. Look at those mowing sides up here. There's garden plow. There's, um, those be ice tongs right there. There's um, some kind of a planter of sorts. And look at this thing here. This is the only other one I've ever seen beside the one that I have. If you notice that odd looking long handle with that double hook in the middle, uh, we always called those tie tongs. Um, but people use, hold on to, two people hold on to the ends of this and pick up railroad ties or small logs and handle them uh, manually. There's a one man cross cut saw, looks like a five foot. Kenley toolbox. Just every kind of watering can you can possibly imagine. Look at that old broad axe up there. There's a post hoe digger. See that little flat auger. More mowing sides. Wooden wheel hubs. More one man saws over top of the doorways. There's an old ice saw. Flat link drive chain. Nice flat belt pulley. Carn sheller. More old chairs. Single trees, single trees, double trees. Look at this old bark lamp. I actually have an old bark lamp very similar to that. I don't know what that is, but I think it's a fish trap. Look at the old buggy wrenches. I assume they're buggy wrenches of sorts. I don't really know. More bowing size. Look at those big old snips up there. I wonder if those are tobacco cutters or if those are just big snips. There's your spring teeth off of an old uh, dump break. Uh, I don't quite know what that great big hook is up there, nor do I know what this little hand crank device is right here. I have no idea. Maybe somebody can enlighten me on that. And here's a well-worn crosscut saw. Absolutely amazing. Here's another set of um, tie tongs. Those are actually the bona fide tie tongs. Those are made to uh, hold at arm's length and pick up the end of a railroad tie and two guys drag it off. Here's an old pet cock off of a wine barrel. Block plane more wooden blocks. Blocks off of a block and tackle, essentially. Corn chiller again, ash scoop. There's an intact sausage press. We use that for uh, stuffing, stuffing casings with, uh, with sausage, or also uh, squeezing out your cracklings whenever you render lard. There's your typical block, your old uh, block and tackle up there hanging from the ceiling. And more larger, like six foot and maybe seven foot crosscut saws. And these guys got some stuff in here, there ain't no doubt. Now there is a there is a seven foot crosscut right there. That one there's um, two cuts and a drag set up on those teeth right there. That one would not cut as quick as uh, one of the ones with the four cuts and a drag. I'm thinking that's a well pulley set up right here. And another old wooden block and tackle set up. There's another something I have no idea. As well as this, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Now, boy, that is a primitive example of a uh, of a cant hook. That is an old timer, and I would love to have that. I've put that to work on the sawmill. There's a 16-pound post mall. There's your three-legged uh, milking stool. My dad always preferred a, uh, a single-legged because he could pivot around so much easier while milking. More things that I don't quite know. What big old stir stick up there is for uh, stirring apple butter in a kettle, I am sure. There's a couple of left-hand monkey wrenches up there. Those are actually Stilson. And then uh, some a couple of model T wrenches right there. Wooden, wooden nuts and uh, big wooden threads. Wow, that's cool. Here's an old homemade sled, actually a couple of them. Your old coal buckets and all that stuff. Look at that. Uh, little tillage tool, small cultivator. Here's your hay trolley. Several of those right here. That's part of one right there and yet another one right there. 
probably not a lady that watches my video knows what, uh, what that thing is right there, as well as this one right here. But those actually go with that thing right over there. Could you imagine doing laundry with, uh, with a combination of those tools right there? In the middle of a wash tub. Now how's that for a post mall? How's that for an old Buck's kitchen stove? This is a wood-fired kitchen stove. Uh, this here is your big warming area up here, but a lot of them actually had a compartment here. This one is not a compartment. So that just traps a lot of heat and contains heat. And you uh, set your pies and, and everything up on top or pot of beans and everything to keep them hot till supper time. It's probably a handmade, one-handed grain scoop. different parts of uh, harnesses and bits for horses. Now for you young fellows out there, when they talk about the proverbial old ice box, this is exactly what you're looking at right here. I actually have one of these down in my basement for decoration. Well, I, while I was busy perusing all the cool stuff, looked like the missus picked her out a few flowers. I don't know what it is about us guys who grew up on a farm, but uh, we have a tendency to hang stuff from the rafters all the time. Just like this guy we just left up there, uh, he's an old farmer. That's nine acres of his dad's property that he's turned into a, um, I guess you call that a nursery because he's got all kinds of stuff up there. It's just absolutely incredible place. But like right here on my ceiling, look, you got an old bull horn off an old bull from way back in the 50s. There's a wooden snatch block or a block off of a uh, block and tackle. And you know, you always got to have the old casters and everybody's got to have a hangman noose. We just have a tendency to hang stuff. You know, it's still too good to throw away. You know, like that old lantern right there. You never know when you're going to need that. Some old tin snips that are too old to use, but too good to throw away. Just everything you can imagine. Look there. There's a retirement light hanging right there. But look, there's another old blowtorch hanging right up there behind that. And look at this, uh, this old scraper right there. I used that for scraping lead joints whenever I was soldering lead. Remember the days of the old aluminum lunchbox with the uh, coffee cup, uh, the coffee thermos up in the top? Well, there's mine. Never have enough seat clamps, no matter how many you have, um, no, no matter what size they are, you never have enough. And there's just one of many shelves of old HVAC service books. Everybody just has to have an old, I think that's a Cadillac. It's gotta have a Cadillac sitting on the shelf. Everybody should have an old boiler gauge hanging around. An Oliver 66 Orchard tractor seat, set of grills off of an Oliver 66. Right behind it is a grill off of a, a 70, an old 70. Right up there's an old horse and buggy spring seat. And of course, the prerequisite hay trolley, just like that old boy had three of them. Motorcycle gas tanks, those are, uh, that's a TS-250 Suzuki right there. There's a breather, an intake, and exhaust off of an L or an LA John Deere. A set of tie tongs right by uh, one of my daughter's favorite teddy bears. And way up top is a set of oxygen regulators off of uh, a set of oxygen tanks who used to run into ambulance when I worked for the funeral home. Back here, Martin Oil Products, Marco oil containers. There's Quaker Made, there's Sun Zo refrigeration. There's uh, also Quaker Made motor oil cans up there. The old fashioned cook fire coffee pots, more gas cans, authentic Ford hydraulic oil. Everyone should have a collection of pedestal mount belt driven grinding wheels or buffing wheels as the case may be. And look at that right angle drive, old, old skill saw up there. Now everybody should have a pedal car. And if you look real close, this ain't hanging from the rafters, but it's a uh, 66 Mustang 289 three-speed. Everybody's got to have one of those. And even little Coleman heater. And look at that old antique fan hanging up there. There's the old sled from whenever I was a kid. And there's uh, there's some of the old handmade rope right here that my grandfather used to make out of baler twine. That is uh, three bundles of two twisted together. So there's six baler twines twisted together to create that rope. He made those up to 100 feet long, all the way down to little bitty old calf halter length ropes, like this little short one right here. Some of them only six or eight foot long. And here's one of the one of the last two wheels in excellent condition from my dad's log wagon that was made in our blacksmith shop by uh, old Mr. Vogt, which, uh, which was blacksmith to work for my grandfather all the way up until the Great Depression. But uh, in about 1908, uh, he made this log wagon for my dad. Up there on the top shelf in lean two, you see a plumber's pot. And if I remember right, that's an old Clinton uh, chainsaw. And of course, one of my watering cans. And of course, we can't seem to have a wall on a building or a shed that just doesn't seem to find a, a bunch of stuff hanging off at it. 
There's all kinds of stuff there you guys can recognize. I guess the point of this tail end of the story is to make the point that old farmers or old farm boys don't really throw anything away. They just find a naked wall, you know, to uh, drive a nail in and to hang it on or grab a rafter and throw something over a rafter, you know what I mean? We just kind of scratched a little bit around the edge here at my place, as well as what I did up at, at that place up there. Uh, that guy's got nine acres and he's got some, some massive stuff back and back. We only made it in one shed. Uh, the missus didn't even make it out of that one shed and she got what she wanted. So you know what? For now, this is Trackman 44 and uh, I'm out of here, guys.